Welcome guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to Miku's Corner. I hope you have a, a great time here. Uh, today we're watching a new video. Not Napoleon, not Napoleon, but a new channel that I watched uh, yesterday. I watched a video on my own, I didn't record it, on the Second World War. And it was so well made. It was so well made. I was blown away. And uh, today I decided to do a reaction to the, the channel called uh, Geo History. Go watch it, go subscribe, amazing channel. Uh, and it's a video about the Seven Years War. Uh, I don't know much about the Seven Years War. I know, you know, that it was basically over Ohio and that the French won, uh, lost. Did they lose? That's a good crap. You see, I don't know that much. But I, I, I think it was like the first like world war uh, as far uh, as I know, I'm not 100% sure. We're going to learn about it. Uh, and let's uh, jump right in. This little known war took place in the mid 18th century, mainly in Europe, but also for the first time in European colonies around the world. This is why it is sometimes considered as the First World War. Uh, let's retrace on a map a summary of the events and consequences of the Seven Years' War. We begin in 1740, when the Holy Roman Empire is divided into a multitude of territories ruled by prince electors. Mm. At the very top of the hierarchy is the title of emperor, which has been shared for almost 300 years by the powerful Habsburg House. But this year, Emperor Charles VI, who is also Archduke of Austria, King of Bohemia and the King of Hungary, <laughs> dies without a male successor. No. His eldest daughter, Marie Therese, cannot be emperor, but nevertheless inherits the territories of her father. Mm. For some competitors, this is a golden opportunity to challenge the Austrian domination. Thus, the young king of Prussia, Frederick II, without a declaration of war, invades the rich region of Silesia. Is it Frederick France, the Great? Austria's traditional enemy takes advantage of the situation to join forces with Prussia. Britain, meanwhile, backs Austria, fearing an imbalance of power in favor of the French Empire. After five years of war, Prussia abandons its French ally by <clears throat> signing a peace treaty with Austria. Prussia holds on to the territory of Silesia, but recognizes Marie Therese as the Archduchess of Austria. Her husband, Francis of Lorraine, obtains the title of Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. France finds itself alone against the coalition and still manages to seize the Austrian yeah. Netherlands. The French. A peace treaty was signed in 1748 and against all odds, the King of France, Louis XV, returns the territories to Austria. What a piece of shit. After the war, a strong rivalry develops between Prussia and Austria, which hopes to one day recover Silesia. Mm. Moreover, the French and British empires increasingly compete for their colonies in the world, primarily in North America, where New France French. Look at the surrounds French. British colonies. With boundaries not clearly defined, the two powers compete for the Ohio Valley. Uh. The first clashes taking place there are mostly dominated by the French side. From a military point of view, Britain dominates the seas and oceans with its powerful Royal Navy, while the French army is deemed What's stronger. What's new? What's new? George II, King of Great Britain and Prince Elector of Hanover, fears losing the German state in case of war. He approaches Prussia for protection and signs an alliance, upsetting the traditional balance of power in the region. After centuries of competition, France and Austria join forces and are joined most notably by Russia. Ooh. European powers meanwhile prepare for war. Okay, let's see the camps. France, Austria, Russia. Powerful. Then we have UK, Prussia. Who are they gonna get, to get on their side? The only ones left in Europe is the Poland. I'm gonna guess this is Poland and Lithuania here because it's a fucking big blob. Uh, maybe the Turks? Are they involved? I don't know. Italy doesn't exist. So that's that. Uh. France attacks first and sends its army to the British island of Menorca. Mm. In India, Britain prepares for war by fortifying Calcutta without the agreement of the Prince of Bengal. The latter responds by driving them out of the city. Britain counterattacks, recovers Calcutta, dethrones the prince, and moves to attack French colonies. 
In North America, yeah. the British Empire prepares to send large military reinforcements. In the European theatre, France prepares a ground offensive in Hanover. Prussia, which finds itself surrounded, launches the first strike on Saxony, a rich, poorly protected region. The offensive is a success, despite an Austrian counter-attack. Prussia continues its offensive by attacking Bohemia. But this time, the intervention of the Austrian army prevents the capture of Prague and pushes the Prussians back to Silesia. In the west, the French offensive in Hanover is a success. The French army now advances to Prussia, which finds its... By the way, this is my opinion. This flag of France looks way better than the current one. Challenge me, bitch. Self besieged. Way better. To the east, the Russian army captures its first territories, and in the south, the Austrian army advances towards Silesia. Britain attempts to distract France from Hanover by initiating military raids on its Atlantic ports. A first military expedition is sent to Rochefort, but is countered by the French army. Frederick II of Prussia sets out with his army to face... Is this Frederick the Great? Because if he is, dude, you have the name of the Great, you win the war. The French. A fine strategist, he wins despite having a much smaller army. The he then moves Prussian to face Napoleon. off against the Austrian army and once again wins due two. to his strategy despite having fewer soldiers. Two for one, two for one. In North America, Britain stations ships at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River to blockade and isolate the French colony. On the European side, King George II refuses to recognize the surrender of his son in Hanover. He raises a new army that repels the French. In parallel, new fuck? raids are organized. After another failure on St. Malo, an offensive on the city of Cherbourg is a success and the city is looted. No. This time, Britain mounts a bigger offensive by sending 42,000 men to St. Malo. But they suffer a serious setback faced against 7,000 French Sickness. soldiers. No, no. This failure marks the end of the raids on France. Britain now concentrates on Hanover and the colonies. In Africa, after the capture of St. Louis, Britain seizes the island of Gorée. Mm. In the east, while Prussia repulses the Russian army, this time it suffers a heavy defeat against Austria, mm, which forces yeah. it to retreat for the winter. You can't always win, man. Anus mirabilis. France plans to invade Great Britain. <laughs> to do this, an army of 100,000 men would be escorted by the military. You know what's crazy? Is that... France has an army of 100,000 men now. In 50 years, they have like the biggest army of 640,000 going into Russia. Okay. Three fleets of Toulon and Brest. In parallel, a new army is sent to Hanover, but the latter fails to take hold. Mm. Meanwhile, Britain intensifies attacks against French colonies. It captures Caribbean islands and lays siege to Quebec City. In the east, Russia manages to Quebec. join the Austrian army. Together, they overcome the army of Frederick II, which opens the way to Berlin, which is not protected. But following disagreements, both armies stop there. Are you kidding me, For bro? France, the situation is complicated. With their military fleets of Toulon and Brest defeated by the Royal Navy, the invasion of Great Britain is abandoned. Without military fleets, France can no longer support its colonies. In North America, <coughs> New France is in disarray. After the capture of Quebec, oh my Britain God. seizes Montreal. Montreal falls. The island of Dominica in the Caribbean and Pondicherry in India fall in quick succession. Dominica was French? Wasn't it Spanish? I mean, they speak Spanish. I mean, Haiti is French, I know that. But Dominica... In Europe, despite several attempts, France can no longer impose itself on Hanover. Hmm. On the other hand, severely weakened and facing defeat, the King of Prussia regroups his last remaining forces into a single army. 2-1 combo, 2-1 combo. This is gonna win. End In January war. 1762, the war takes a new turn with the death of Elizabeth the Tsarina of Russia. No, Her successor, really? Peter III of Russia, is an admirer of Prussia and does not want to engage in war. Oh, he pussy. quickly signs a peace treaty. In the West, the Spanish... In 200 years, the guy is gonna cry. In 200 years, they'll be all the way to Moscow. So... Spanish Empire takes a negative view of British domination. 
Spain then goes to war with France. An army is sent to Portugal, the Iberian ally of Great Britain, forcing the latter to send reinforcements. Uh, quick, uh, you know, interesting information. Did you know that Great Britain and Portugal have the longest alliance ever? 700 years. Go check it out. But in parallel, Britain takes advantage of an opportunity to seize Cuba and Manila in the Philippines. In Prussia, the king's army succeeds in defeating the Austrian army. <laughs> Exhausted by years of war, European powers begin peace negotiations. Okay, what happens here? France loses all of North America. Basically. Two peace treaties are signed separately. A first in Paris between France, Great Britain and Spain. France loses almost all its colonies. So how did they gain them back? Because Napoleon, by the time 1804 comes around, uh, he sells uh, the, the colonies, well, you know, the Louisiana Purchase. So by then, he, by 1815, they have, uh, 1805, they, uh, somehow France gets back its colonies. I don't know how that happens. The country retains some territories in America, the island of Gore in Africa, and, and still, five posts they in still India, have St. Pierre provided they do not fortify or send armies there. Spain recovers Cuba, Manila, and gets Louisiana in exchange for Florida and peace with Portugal. On the other hand, the Treaty of Hubertusburg is signed between Prussia and Austria. Prussia liberates Saxony in exchange for which it retains Silesia. That's it? The human toll of war is heavy, with 1.3 million people dead. More than half of them are civilians. European powers are weakened by war and forced to increase taxes to repay their debts. The oh. first colonial empire of France is dismantled. We the don't all know how that ended. Its military industry, mainly its naval. So because of the Seven Years' War, Britain raised taxes, they lose the colonies, and France raised taxes and they get decapitated. The fleet to catch up with Britain. And it was a war that basically... Forced to abandon Silesia, but saves face by liberating Saxony. Prussia, although greatly weakened, is now respected and even feared. Finally, Britain becomes the major world power, but its empire is also indebted by war. It intends to take advantage of its colonies to repay debt through new taxes which causes great discontent. On the other hand, Native American tribes unite to demand the departure of the British from the former French colony and demand an independent state. We all know the how that ended. tries to calm the situation by creating in a rush an Indian reservation. But this again prevents British colonists from expanding their territories in the West, increasing frustrations. This sows the seeds of separation between the British government and its colonists. Great video, guys. That was a great video. We learned everything. Seven Years' War, Britain gained the most. Gained the most. I mean, they, they would lose everything in like five, 10 years, but they gained the most. France lost everything, all the colonies. Uh, uh, Russia didn't get anything. They gained prestige and they were able to retain Silesia that they already had. Like, they gave up Saxony. They took Saxony and then they gave it up. What? Uh, Austria didn't lose anything. Russia was like, you know what, I respect the, uh, you know, the Prussians, I'm going to let them go, I'm going to do them a favor, I don't want to fight them, I'm going home, moron. Uh, but yeah, it was a pretty good video, I hope you liked it, uh, leave a like guys, uh, support the channel, subscribe, you know, we're 36 now, 36 subscribers. Um, and yeah, hope you like this, I'll see you guys next time, see ya.